Hey everyone, welcome to the psychology lecture series. In this video, we are going to talk about case studies. Case study in psychology refers to the use of a descriptive research approach to obtain an in-depth analysis of a person, group or phenomenon. A variety of techniques may be employed including personal interviews, direct observation, psychometric tests and archival records. In psychology, case studies are most often used in clinical research to describe rare events and conditions which contradict well-established principles in the field of psychology. Case studies are generally a single case design but can also be a multiple case design where replication instead of sampling is the criterion for inclusion. Like other research methodologies within psychology, the case study must produce valid and reliable results in order to be useful for the development of further research. The case study is sometimes mistaken for the case method but the two are not the same. Case studies can make use of both qualitative and quantitative research methods. In a case study, nearly every aspect of the subject's life and history is analyzed to seek patterns and causes of behavior. One of the greatest advantages of a case study is that it allows researchers to investigate things that are often difficult or impossible to replicate in a lab. For example, the case study of Genie allowed researchers to study whether language could be taught even after critical periods for language development had been missed. In Genie's case, her horrific abuse had denied her the opportunity to learn a language at critical points in her development. This is clearly not something that researchers could ethically replicate, but conducting a case study on Genie allowed researchers the chance to study otherwise impossible to reproduce phenomena. Let us take a look at some of the different types of case studies. Explanatory case studies are often used to do casual investigations. In other words, researchers are interested in looking at factors that may have actually caused certain things to occur. Exploratory case studies are sometimes used as a prelude to further more in-depth research. This allows researchers to gather more information before developing their research questions and hypothesis. Descriptive case studies involve Starting with a descriptive theory, the subjects are then observed and the information gathered is compared to the pre-existing theory. Intrinsic case studies are a type of case study in which the researcher has a personal interest in the case. Jean Piaget's observations of his own children are good examples of how an intrinsic case study can contribute to the development of a psychological theory. Collective case studies involve studying a group of individuals. Researchers might study a group of people in a certain setting or look at an entire community of people. Instrumental case studies occur when the individual or group allows researchers to understand more than what is initially obvious to observers. Now let us discuss some of the methods of a case study. Prospective case study methods are those in which an individual or group of people are observed in order to determine outcomes. For example, a group of individuals might be watched over an extended period of time to observe the progression of a particular disease. Retrospective case study methods 
are those that involve looking at historical information. For examples, researchers might start with an outcome such as a disease and then work their way backward to look at information about the individual's life to determine risk factors that may have contributed to the onset of the illness. In 20 statements test, the participant is asked to give 20 answers to the question about who or what are you. Each answer begins with the word I am and the participant's response can be explored in terms of content or sequence. In addition, the test can be repeated at different points in time to identify self-perception. Next method is the repertory grids. In this grid, the participant is asked to generate about 10 elements which he or she then compares with one another. For example, if the elements are self as friend, self as lover, self as parent, self as worker and so on, the participant would be asked in what way any two of them are similar and how are they different from a third. For example, self as a friend and self as a lover may be described as warm and contrasted when self as worker is described as business-like. Each comparison generates a construct that is the terms of reference that the person uses to think about his or her social roles. This process of comparison continues until the participant finds it difficult to generate new constructs. Finally, the participant grades each element in relation to each construct when the grid is complete. It provides a visual display of patterns and associations between elements and constructs. This in turn provides insight into the ways in which the participant constructs personal meanings to make sense of the social world. One major advantage of the case study in psychology is the potential for development of novel hypotheses for later testing. Second, the case study can provide detailed descriptions of specific and rare cases. The disadvantage of case study is that it cannot be used to determine causation. Causation is the act of causing or producing. I hope you like this video. Please share these videos with everyone who is preparing for this exam. Thank you.